Salutations, this is Dave Degenerate, and I am really ill this week, as you can probably tell from my voice, because it would appear I have the immune system of a kitten. And although I love kittens, I don't want to have the immune system of one, because it just bums me out. Anyway, I'm going to give you one of the SD lessons, and this week is not really about guitars, but it is because I'm going to do one about soldering electronic components. And that is something that I think every guitarist should know about, because if you have a guitar and you want to sort of pick-ups out or play stuff, you're going to know how to solder. And it also means you get to be a bit manly and be a bit of a handyman and say to people, oh yeah, I know how to do this. Unless you are, of course, a girl, because, you know, I do not discriminate, and if you're a girl, you should know how to solder too, because that's great. Because, you know, that's, that's, yeah, it's cool. Go for it, ladies. Love the ladies. Anyway, I got my soldering iron warming up. Uh, I recently got back a pedal that I had loaned to Jim, the bassist of System Degenerate, not so long ago. And this thing, we were using it in a practice a little while back, and it started smoking and making a really unpleasant burning noise as well as stopped working. So we managed to stop it from catching fire at least, which is, you know, a small bonus for that day because that would have probably ruined the day for both of us involved. And uh, I basically got it back after it sat under his bed for a couple of years, and I'm now going to have a look at fixing it. And yeah, get back to you in a minute. Okay, this is the inside of the pedal. Um, what I basically deduced it was, was this thing, the, the battery slot. As you can see, it is pretty solidly melted. I also broke it yesterday by hitting it with a hammer. Don't ask why, it's a long story. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so basically what I'm going to start off by doing anyway is, I know that's more or less the problem, but I'm going to just quickly test the other electronics in here. So, just lightly tug them. Well, actually, I'm going to remove that one so it doesn't matter if I lightly tug that one. <laughs> funny. Anyway, uh, yeah, just give them all a light little tug and make sure that they're in there nice and securely. That one I'm not going to bother tugging, I'm just going to look at. I can smell that soldering iron heating up, that's something nice. These ones... This seems to be in pretty secure. And yeah, and then I'm going to get down to removing the components in a minute, once the soldering iron has heated up to the point where I can actually use it. Okay, so I'm ready to go. Now, a few words of warning here. I'm pretty sure that the burning point of solder is somewhere in the region of 100 degrees. Now, it's 100 degrees Fahrenheit. I normally use Celsius because I'm English, and Celsius actually makes sense because us English, you know, we use things that make sense. Except for the imperial system, use the metric system of weight because that's much better. Anyway, um, these things do get really hot. So, if you do get burned by one, then man up and quit your whining because it's not going to kill you. But you should probably run it under a tap or something because you might have a blister. So the first step anyway, is to do what's called tinning the soldering iron. Which is essentially where you just melt a bit of solder on the end there. And hopefully my soldering iron is not so dirty that it will not allow me to do this. Oh, I think it is. No, no, no. No, it's cool. Got some tin there. Flick the excess off there. And now what we're going to do... So I'm going to remove the battery component. Now, the really important thing to do here is not burn the other wires because they're all going to be intermingled with each other. So as well as not burning myself, I've got to worry about that too. So let's just melt some of this. And get that removed. Come on you, hurry up and melt. This could take a while, so I may just have to... May just have to cut filming and then worry about it because my cheap soldering iron is playing up right now. So I'll do that. Okay, I'm back. I have removed the component and I got a new one here that is going to go on there. So here's what you do. Now, you should really take photographs of the components and things like that before you remove them, which I didn't do, but I already know what I'm doing here. And you basically use that so that you know where to solder the next one. But what you basically have to do is to heat up the component with the soldering iron and not the solder itself. Now, I'm not going to apply any more solder because there's already a little bit here on the component that bit there. So I'm basically just going to heat up the component until it melts into that. But ordinarily I'll be applying more solder to it. But trying to film and do this at the same time is really, really tedious. So, yeah, there is that. 
And I just keep pushing it behind because I'm a little bit of a mess doing this right now. Okay. Um, I'm going to come back and do this in a minute. Okay, it's a good job I wasn't filming that because essentially what's going on right now is I'm using a soldering iron that really, really badly needs to have this tip replaced, which means that it's becoming quite difficult to solder, which means that that thing that I just did has in actual fact turned the air blue with all the rather unpleasant swear words I was using which would not have been appropriate for YouTube, although a lot of people do. Anyway, this component is now soldered in place. And all I did there was I melted the solder that was already onto it and I got the new component there. So I'm going to do that with the connection of the next bit and then I'm going to test out the component well the pedal whatever and we'll see how this looks. Okay so long story short kids make sure that you're using a clean soldering iron tip and make sure your soldering iron doesn't nearly fall down the stairs that would have been rather catastrophic good job I was holding it. Anyway so I've soldered the components in now so give them a light tug to make sure that they're in there nice and securely, they seem to be. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to test it. So I've got my battery, I'm going to plug that in, I'm going to turn the pedal around. Now the on switch of these pedals is actually the input jack. So I'm just going to plug something into the pedal's input jack, hit the pedal, and see if the light comes on. And if this doesn't work, then it's going to be very embarrassing. So let's have a look. Oh, look at that. The light came on. I'll turn this light off so you can see. You see that? That's come on there. So this pedal is now working okay. So that's the rough ins and outs of soldering. Now what I will do, because I had to keep cutting away because of the frustrations of using this thing, I'll basically demonstrate for you the principles of what you would do. So you would have your component and then you would hold the end of your component onto it, heat the end of the component up, and then touch the solder to the component. On no account should you ever try to melt solder directly onto a soldering iron and then try to put that onto the component. That's not going to work. That's only going to end up with a really loose connection that's going to break. So that's a rough rundown of some soldering in my usual style. And I will see you guys next week.